Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're doing something a little bit different as you might have already been able to tell from the title. Um, I got asked under one of my cast videos if I could do a tutorial on how I make my cast thumbnails and I'm not gonna lie I was kind of like uh, <laughs> mm, I could try like I don't know. <laughs> so I asked on Twitter and asked a few of my friends and everyone was like oh yeah please do it and I'm like uh, guess guess I got myself into this now <laughs> but hey at least we're into this into this <laughs> are we into this I don't know but at least we're in this together so let's jump right in and <laughs> I don't know if you could hear this but my cat just meowed because he feels very lonely today I feel like he's just been bugging me all day but anyways we're gonna jump right in like I said, I use GIMP um, as you might have already seen in the title or if you use GIMP you will probably have noticed that I use GIMP. It's a free software, I'm gonna put the link in the description so you can go download it if you don't have it already. And just to tell you right now, I'm gonna use a few shortcuts that you can find if you go on either edit. Um, so I use these two shortcuts mainly which is fill with either the foreground color or the background color so if you do it by yourself um, you can just go into edit or right click onto your, onto your image and go on edit and pick those options if you don't want to use the shortcuts obviously um, and then what I'm also gonna do is use that invert quite a lot so this is control plus the I key um, and I'm gonna use select none which is just shift control plus a um, if I don't want anything selected because I'm just moving stuff around or filling something in um, yeah that's pretty much the shortcuts I'm gonna use that you can always find here or if you don't want to use the shortcuts as I said you can go into edit or select and do that um, if I say something wrong it's because <laughs> I used to use GIMP in German so I might have a little bit of trouble finding <laughs> all the options that I use because I'm not used to the English GIMP I don't know why I never had it in English because I pretty much have everything in my life set to English so God knows but <laughs> it's English now so hopefully that will help you all so the first thing I like to do is um, have this just blank image here that is 1920 by 1080 just because that's you know um, a pretty good resolution for the thumbnails so what I like to do first is go on this tool up here the gradient tool um, so I like to do the use this little setting here which is just foreground to background which is literally going from this lighter blue into this darker blue which I like as my background and then by dragging these little things up here and down here you can pick how much of the background color you want and how much of the foreground color you want so you can just keep dragging these until you're happy with what you got and I think this looks quite pretty so let's pick that and then by clicking this thing here you can always go back to just the plain black and white color um, and then what I like to do back here you can use your different or add your different layers and do all of the layer stuff <laughs> that you need to do so what I do now is create and so I right click this sorry <laughs> and then I add a new layer which I'm gonna call border because as you might or might not know I like to create borders on my thumbnails just to give it a little bit of a extra something to it I guess um, so I like to fill this in with control and the dot R whatever it tells you here it might be different for you because the German keyboards are a little bit different so who knows what <laughs> shortcut it is for you but you can find out like a setup there and then what we need to do is right click that little layer and go on alpha to selection and then you want to go on select and invert and uh, not invert sorry <laughs> select and shrink <laughs> I'm a bit all over the place that's probably not the best for a tutorial and then you want to change this to 25 or you can pick whichever size you want it literally just changes how far you go inwards from that so if you want your border to be here you're gonna have to use maybe 40 or a bit of a larger number but I like to have about this much um, of the outside cut out so what we want to do is control and I to or invert select invert to just um, highlight this outer area and then we want to press delete on our keyboard and then there you have it that's just the inner bit of our border and then I click on this layer again and go on alpha to selection again and select the shrink and I do this on 20 because I want it to be 20 wide 
And then you can go ahead and just delete this because you've got the inner bit of the white bit. <laughs> I'm gonna say bit a lot, <laughs> be prepared. Um, so yeah, so you have the little border here. What I like to do is go into filters, light and shadow and just go on to drop shadow. And you can, what I like to do is take the blur off because I do not want the shadow to be blurry, but you can obviously select the different settings here and put them to however you like it. But I like to put the opacity to 980 ish. I just put it around that. Whoop, that's a bit much <laughs> around that area because then it's kind of still a bit see through, but not too much. So it's not just one solid color. I actually think I'm going to go down a little bit more on this one. And then you can, by changing these, you can decide how far away the drop shadow or how close up to the object it should be. So I'm going to maybe go to like a 10 ish. That looks good. So it's just a little bit, um, not too much. You can still see the whole shadow. That's what I usually do with the, with the border. And then we want to go on our sim here. I obviously have a different cast background to the usual Sims 4 background. There's a few you can download and just put in your game. So it's a bit easier to cut out your sim because it's all one solid color. So if I go onto the tool up here, which is select by color, you can just simply click this and press delete. And what I like to do now is because there's a little bit of green left around her and it bugs me. <laughs> you probably, you should be able to just go ahead and use her like this. But I am a bit picky, <laughs> a bit perfectionist. So I like to get rid of these things. And the easiest way I found is by clicking onto the layer of the sim, go on alpha to selection, then go on select and shrink this time just by one. And then you want to go on select and invert or press the little shortcut that I explained to you earlier. And then I'm going to zoom in here so you can actually see how there's a little bit of green everywhere that I don't want. So I'm just going to press delete and then it's gone and it's just the sim left and no weird green <laughs> border around her that I do not appreciate. So now we're just going to control C to copy her onto our thumbnail layer and then we want to do create a new layer this is what you want to do whenever you add something new to your thumbnail just so that later on if i want to move her around i can just freely do that without moving all of the other things so this like every new layer is pretty much like one new thing that you can just move about and change without having to change the whole thing over again and then what I like to do, because you have to keep in mind that a thumbnail is probably like this big, so you wouldn't be able to tell what's going on on here. So you want to have the sim pretty big, or at least I like to. So you just drag this. By changing these things on GIMP, they're always linked usually. By changing it, I could then freely go ahead and just move her or like scale her in any direction. So make her wider or taller. But... Um, by oops, reset by just linking this I can just drag it and it literally just is a bit more even so I don't have a flat face or a super skinny face so I want to scare her to about that if I press M I always just have that little tool up here the move to move <laughs> the move tool and then I can just freely move her around and I'm going to put her to around here which I like to do and then what I like to do with my sim is because she doesn't quite I don't know I think think she needs something to her to be a bit more kaboom so <laughs> you can actually tell she's there so I like to go on filters and hands and go on the sharpen uh, setting and then you can see before this she was very like blunt looking and it just gives her a little bit more definition I guess and you can just play around with the radius that you want which I'll probably just leave how it was and the amount of the I think it's uh, the amount of the black that they add and we're just gonna leave it with pretty much like this that's what I like <laughs> but you can obviously do it however you want and I'm kind of happy with that but what I like to do most of the times is go into colors and then I go into the color temperature and then I just put this up a little because it makes it a bit more warm but you can play around with that anytime obviously and I like to change the contrast a little bit and make it a little bit lighter but that's what I like to do you can just experiment with these things a little and adjust it to however you want it to be this is I think I'm pretty much happy with how she looks now so I'm gonna go on this and down here you can 
um, duplicate the layers that you got. So I'm just going to click this and then I have two of the same layers. And what we want to do now is add a little bit of a background. So like a little border around her. And how we're going to do that is go on alpha to selection again, which just means you select the alpha <laughs> channel, I guess, on this image. So just select the sim herself. And then we're going to go on select and grow this time. And I like to do this by around 15. And then you can see this is how big the border will be. So we're going to press control and then just add the background color. And there we go. There we have the sim. I like to now merge these down. So I have both the border and the sim on one little layer so I can move them both together instead of having to move both of them around if I want to end up if I end up moving the sim. And then what I do is just use the shadow, the drop shadow again, just literally how I used it before. The only difference that I like to make, <laughs> I can't, I'm just realizing I can't concentrate and talk. But anyways, the only difference I like to make is just change this up a little bit. So I like the shadow to be quite far out from the sim. I think it looks a little bit nicer than it being really close like what I did with the border. So I just like to move this out a little bit more, maybe like this. And then we got the first layer done. Check. Now we got two, two more things to do. I'm going to do a new layer and I usually call this pose because I use the pose here. And what I like to do is I actually do not like her face to be in this. So I usually cut out the bit of her that I want to be in the thumbnail. So probably around here is what I like. And then you just invert this again. So you have the outside selected and press delete. And then you literally have that little thing there. So what we want to do again is go on set select by color like we did before and just delete this. And yeah, with that, I'm usually fine with the borders. They're not too bad. And if you delete them a lot of times because it's so small, it will actually delete a lot of the body. But let's just try it out. Sometimes it works. <laughs> so let's just shrink this by one again and then press invert or control I and press delete to delete those little borders again, those little green weird things. Yeah, I'm actually happy that I did that because it's a bit more sharp now. And let's copy this and put it onto our actual thumbnail. It's coming together, isn't it? Ooh! <laughs> so we put her onto our pose layer and then just click somewhere in the image to actually get her onto the layer and not have her selected all the time. And then what I like to do is duplicate the area again down here. And I think for this image, I'm actually going to use pink as a second color. I chose this pink earlier that I quite like. And then I'm going to go in here again and just use a little bit of a lighter version of it. So we have two different pink versions here. Um, you could choose any other color that you want. You could also just do this with white or whatever you want to. <laughs> and then I like to go onto the tool up here again just to select a rectangle. And then I pretty much just go around the sim how I want the little backdrop to be and about here seems quite nice. So let's do that. And then we fill that with the background color. So the little bit darker pink. And then I go on to here again, alpha to selection because I want um, the little, what is this even called? <laughs> Dip dye? <laughs> I guess gradient, right? That, that must be the word for it. I never heard that, be but I guess it's a gradient. Um, and I like it to go from the lighter one. Let's make it a bit lighter. Actually from the lighter pink into the bit darker pink. Whoops, that's the wrong setting. <laughs> we want foreground to background. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to just move this around to how you want it. Then we go on that tool again to not select it. And then we have that little backdrop here that we want. And I'm going to actually um, alpha to selection again, because what I like to do is go on filters, render, go on pattern, then onto the grid, because I like a few lines to be there. Um, I like them in white, but you could obviously pick whichever color you want. And what I like to do with this is actually unlink these to the width and the height. If they're linked, you can only have like a little bit of a grid, but I actually just want lines to go straight, well, horizontal, I guess. <laughs> so I like to unlink this 
and then put the width to zero so we just have horizontal lines and then you can just mess a bit with how far you want them to be apart and then how thick you want the lines to be um, and I think if we're this far out this setting probably looks good so let's just click OK select nothing again like go on here and either select none or just do that little shortcut here that I use all the time and then you want to go on this backdrop that we just created and go on duplicate layer again then we want to go alpha to selection again because I would like a little white border to be around this and same old same old we're gonna go on um, select and grow and I like to do this by around six it's between five and seven ish but I usually do six <laughs> so let's do that we obviously need to pick the white color again and fill it with the background color and then we have this ready <laughs> so what I like to do now is go on to the pose of the sim because I would like her to have a little bit of a white border around her so we're gonna duplicate her um, area <laughs> her layer <laughs> wow again go on alpha to selection again to just select her body then we're gonna go on um, select and grow again like we did before I use six as well and fill that with the background color and select nothing and then we'd have her on here and then to just put these together so we can move the sim with the little border that we just created I'm gonna right click and merge down so you can see now she's on just one layer the background and her on one layer so I can move her with the background without having to worry about getting it matched up properly again so let's put her back <laughs> and then when I have her here I like to give her a little bit of a shadow as well so just go into light and shadow go on to drop shadow again put the blur down like I said that's what I like to do but obviously you can pick whichever settings you want and I'm quite happy with this I think I want to move the shadow a bit closer mm, actually we need to move the shadow a bit closer because I can't stand if the shadow goes outside <laughs> of the little um, border that we've created around her the little backdrop so let's just do that again put the opacity to about there put the blur radius down and just move this a little bit closer that's good now it's inside as you can see it's inside here now <laughs> I do not like it to be outside but you can do it however you want you're not really gonna see it that much anyways um, yeah so that's good so what I like to do now is merge all of these different layers together so we just want to merge this one down and this one down so now we have have this whole thing as one so we can move that around freely and then I just want to repeat the drop shadow or nope I want to go actually reshow it because I think the shadow needs to be out a little bit more so let's up the opacity again and let's move this out a tiny bit more maybe like here I think that looks good right now you can obviously this is in front of the sim which you probably don't want you probably want the this picture to be like the main focus so you can move the layers behind that and by doing that it just literally goes behind there or if you want it in front of it you just move it up one and then this is the primary layer that will be on top of everything but I want it to be under the sim actually because I want that to be the focus I think I'm gonna move her to the left side a little bit more oops not that one <laughs> this one I think I'm gonna move her to the left side a little bit more just so there's a bit more space um, so we can move this a little bit in now and then what I like to do is put a little bit of font here so I usually put the title of the video for this video I guess I'm just gonna put Aspen because that's the sims name so we want a new layer and we want to call that font just to not get confused with what layer is what and then we want to go into the little text tool here you want to drag that so you can just write something the font that I like to use right now is this one um, but there's tons of free fonts that you can find that are really pretty so there's tons of options for you out there so her name is Aspen so let's just do that I'm gonna probably go we need to go quite large on this I guess because <laughs> it's there's a lot of free space in this one because we only have one word a lot of times I'd have two two words but for her I'm just gonna call her Aspen and then what I do is I click this little text layer and I merge this one down because now it's on here and I can just move it around freely and then we obviously want it on the side here to go along from up here to down here so we need to use this tool which is the rotate tool 
and you just want to click it and then you can rotate it in either direction that you want. So I'm just going to put 90 because I want 90% rotate and then you want to rotate that. And just by pressing M you can move this around freely. And as you can see now, I actually made it a bit too large. <laughs> so it's actually going to glitch into here. So I like to use this tool, the scale tool. And then you can just click on here. And what I like to do is actually unlink it this time and just make it a little bit shorter because it needs to be quite wide to fill the whole area. So I just like it to be a bit more short. <laughs> and then we move this around a little bit. Now it fits quite nicely. We're going to use this a bit to the side. And now, as you can see, it fits a bit more nicely. Actually, I think I need to rotate it a bit more so it looks straight because the font is a little bit wonky sometimes. I think that looks quite nice. And now what I like to do is just make this area invisible for a second so I can focus on the writing. Because what I like to do now is just um, duplicate that layer again, alpha to selection, what we've done before to select what we've got on that layer. And then what I like to do is grow that one by five and fill it with black. So the foreground color just to have it stand out a little bit more. And then I like to just merge these down. So again, I can just move this around freely without having to worry about both of the layers being right on top of each other. And then we want to duplicate that again, go on alpha to selection. And then I actually like to grow this by around 20 and just to have a kind of a big border around, oops, a big border around the area, around the font. And then what I like to do is use the colors we got for the background. And then I use this gradient tool again. And what I do is just, mm, yeah, it's that direction, right? Because we went from dark to light <laughs> on this one. So that's what I like to do on this. I like to match it up with that little pose that I got. And what we want to do is probably around here. I want it a bit lighter. I think that looks quite good. So now I just leave it as that. Um, and then I like to just merge these together again. And I probably have to move this a little bit so it's not interfering with that little um, border. <laughs> wow, I've talked so much I, don't, I can't even remember words anymore. But yeah, now we've got this. I probably want to turn it a little bit more just so it looks a bit more straight. That's good. And then we can bring this one back. What I like to do with the font is add another shadow. So go on filters, lights and shadows, and then go on drop shadow again. Like I did before, I remove the blur, then I like to put it to around 980 ish. So that's probably good. And then I think, uh, I think around here is quite nice. So we have to move it in a little bit more. And what I like to do now is add a little bit of a, an, another drop shadowy thing. Well, I guess it's not a shadow, but <laughs> just a little bit of a backsplash. Maybe you can call it that um, by just duplicating this again. And then I like to go on my paint brushes and I've got a few custom paint brushes that you can just download. There's a lot of free stuff out there for GIMP that you can just use. Um, and I like to just pick one of my watercolor brushes and then I pick the pink that I used in this little image right here. Um, and then I literally just go around and just fill the back in, but I'll have this on a bit of an angle. So it's actually straight. You don't have to worry about going over these things because we can just push the area back a little after we're done. So it's behind all of the other, whoops, that was a bit much. So it's behind, that's a bit much again. <laughs> so don't worry about making mistakes. Gimp is pretty good with that. Like you can just delete everything again. And as long as you put everything on a different layer, there shouldn't be any problems with just deleting certain aspects if you don't like them and just do them over again. So I think this is quite cute. Sometimes I like to go in and use a bit of a darker color just to go and enhance the fonting a little bit more. And I'm quite happy with that. So now I'm going to use this layer here and just move it all the way under the border. So it doesn't interfere with the border. It doesn't go over the border or anywhere else. I actually just use the erase tool here and just erase this little bit back here because I don't like it. <laughs> so it has to be removed, but that's pretty much how I make my thumbnails. And now what I do is right click and merge all the visible layers that we have. I just keep all the settings that we have here and merge them. So everything is on one layer. And then what I like to do is go on filters, light and shadow and 
I think it's this one. Like I said, it was... Nope, it's not that one. <laughs> like I said, it used to be in German before, so I might... Oh, lens flare, there it is. So I like to use the lens flare, and then by clicking on this little thing here, you can just freely move... Whoops, guess I unclicked it. You can just freely move the lens flare around, so you can just pick it up and put it wherever you want. And I think it looks quite nice over here, and then you can just move it backwards a little, or wherever. Hmm, maybe over here. I don't I don't know. I just sounded like a car backing up, didn't I? Like the little beeper that you have. <laughs> I think I want it maybe around here. That looks quite nice. So it's all over here. Then we press OK. And what I like to do now is again go on filters, enhance and go on sharpen. Just to make it a bit more crisp is that word. <laughs> So I like to just keep the settings as they are and then like I said you can play around with the colors a little bit um, And just change it until you please I think I'll be happy with this and that's pretty much how I make every single thumbnail of mine <laughs> And then you just want to go on file and export as and then you can just choose which file you want to export it in You got to be careful though if I export this right now into show right here um, and just call this Aspen I usually do save them as JPEGs though, just because that's my preference. And if you export it, you want to make sure to not get it to all the way up to 100 because then YouTube can be a bit cranky and say the image is too big. So I put it on 97 and that always worked for me. So it's pretty much the same quality. Like there's no change that is visible, but <laughs> you shouldn't have it on 100. Just um, heads up so you don't wonder why it's too big so yeah i hope you liked this little tutorial i probably went on for quite a while so i hope i didn't bore you and if you have any um, other questions or if you didn't understand anything feel free to leave a comment or just message me on twitter um, i'm happy to reply to you and explain something again or if there's any other things you want to know feel free um, so yeah as always i hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe if you have not already and i'll see you in tomorrow's video bye Oh, 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 oh,